that was fun, Steve. I, you you just about broke out into the Ugandan well jig, but it, uh, <laughs> it was I was a little ways from that. You have you to know, work on it a little more before you go in the next. Mike, Mike, Sa Mike Sally was doing perfect. He was, he's, a, he's an interesting guy because he he will it. just get really um, out there. You know, and then, in fact, they had a microphone. Everybody used the microphone, including me. They had to be speak for a minute at that thing. And then he did. He says, I don't need this mic. And so he handed it to him. He's got a big old booming voice as well. So he, he's great. Yeah, you he's could tell amazing. he was feeling at home there. Yeah. So, well, I understand you were at the border or something. Tell us about uh, where you've been. Well, yeah, just um, um, Friday and Saturday. I guess I got there Thursday. I had a, an invitation to McAllen, uh, Texas, speaking at a, it's a Hispanic conference with um, uh, um, a 25th, 25th anniversary for a, a significant church. And they have um, many pastors that come both from Mexico, United States, other places as well. And so um, um, we were sharing really on, on the seven mountains and just a whole nother narrative, the narrative we're generally bringing across here. And so it was super well received, but you know, we were the hotel I was staying at had about 30 or 40 uh, U S military. And wow. we, were, we were about 10 minutes from the main border area where um, a, a lot are coming through. So I was asking the pastors there, I was like, well, how are you, how are y'all feeling this? And they said, well, honestly, if it wasn't for the news, we wouldn't know it at all. And so, uh, which was kind of good to hear in that. What is that? What did he mean by that? Was, well, explain his, what he meant. his explanation was they, they technically, the uh, if you call them the illegals, they technically cross the line into the United States, but then there's a fence that doesn't allow them uh, to get any further. And so then from our side, they go there and they take them, they bust them to a processing place. So they never see... Um, you know, when you hear the news, you think of it being just a wide open door and there's people just streaming into those uh, cities and villages. Well, at least down there, McAllen, which is right across from, is it Reynoso? It's a big uh, Mexican um, city. Uh, and so they're they're just right on the border uh, together. And so anyway, it was just interesting to see and hear about that and be aware that, um, you know, we could see we, we had a presence there, but um, it, it wasn't... Um, it wasn't as bad, and, and except for they did tell us, yes, we have, when we do counseling, when we do whatever we do, w there is a lot of drug tra trade that's coming in through here. And so that's not through the ones that are being uh, processed through the border in general. That's just being done. Well, can I ask you this? And I have no idea if you would know the answer. Derek Johnson was on last week or the week before. And he said he had driven most of the length of the Texas border and that the, that the things that have been reported were largely not happening in Texas any longer. But I mean, I didn't, I didn't know how to pinpoint what you, what about here? What, I, I don't know the, the points. What, do you have anything to say on that? Well, I don't know. Um, I just know I was there and didn't see anything. And I was literally where I could, you could see across into Mexico and, um, and so that's what I was told. And the rest of it is what we're being told as well. And so whether there's an element of this is part of, I think maybe Derek Johnson might have gone there. There's part of, we'll say, a White Hat's operation to wake up the American people of Texas to the fact that this we do have porous borders. Um, and, and I don't know if the numbers are really true that we're getting, you know, mm -hmm. from we're getting them from all, all kinds of different sources. We do know that they're being processed and then being sent to sanctuary cities. That's a reality because they show up there. And I think that's part of the, we'll say the lesson giving for the the states and cities that vote to no, let them all in because they're not next to the border. It wouldn't affect them. So there is, you know, I will say the good guys would like the sanctuary cities to feel what it's like to just let them come in. No questions asked. And it drains on your economy and everything else. And so it's like, OK, you want them. We're taking them straight to you. Let's see how you handle that. And then, 
of course, then they're asking for emergency funds and saying they're about to go bankrupt New York City, Chicago, especially yeah. those two um, cities. So it's part of a whole awakening um, for us. And um, I don't know um, much more than that because, uh, you know, you can't really uh, we can't really find out without. I, I think even if I went right up to there and started a conversation with uh, someone, it's not clear. I wouldn't know the, the true, the true numbers, whatever. So, um, yeah, I it's think hard it's, to know, isn't it? It's yeah. Because I think you're it's saying even, well, I was going to say, you're saying that even, even the ones that are getting through might be fewer. The, I guess it's, it's just hard to even know how to explain this, that it may not be quite as bad as anybody is hearing because the white hats are making sure that it's reported in a severe number to wake everybody up. Am I, am I saying that about right? Yeah. And it might be like one of these things that's technically true that the people yeah. that try to get in are the numbers that they're giving us, but that they're actually just allowing through those that they want to go ahead and send to sanctuary cities in order for that lesson to be learned by them. That's just a, a little bit of a guess going yeah. going on there um, because it is part of this whole psyop thing that's that's going on, which is designed to uh, it's a psyop based on realities to wake up the American people. Like, how can you just allow people to come in with no papers, with no documents, with no anything, and then uh, and what's reportedly happening in places like California, wherever you're going to instantly allow them to vote with no process of moving forward. So it's just the foolishness of that system is being exposed before us. And we should uh, challenge it, rise up, do whatever. Texas seems to be doing a good thing at, you know, Governor uh, Abbott is now, you know, he's going to be building. He said he's going to uh, build a place at, I think, near the region where we were, where there's going to be couple thousand soldiers or more they're a military base basically to ensure this doesn't happen and so oh. it's a state that you know i think that's part of it the states are supposed to take their own initiative at defending their own state and not relying on the quote federal government that is uh clearly a, you, we would call it incompetent if we didn't know that it was intentional and actual corruption yeah Really good. Well, I missed part one of the Super Bowl, and I had great plans that by the time I would be wake, very well awake in the early morning, I would listen to it. But I didn't get that done. With only three hours, I kept trying to get back to sleep, and I failed. But anyway, I'll probably take a nap after today. But tell, tell, jump in where you want to jump in. If you need to recap, go ahead and do that. If you don't, just go forward. Well, yeah, and I appreciate you even uh, showing up at all. We know that that was uh, actually unlikely a week ago that you would, yeah. so you could just make it. So no expectation yeah. you haven't um, uh, uh, heard it all. And so yeah. we're not going to repeat anything from it. It's available um, from yeah. last week. We're just going to say, so it, what it was about, it was a Super Bowl prophetic word, a lot of great stuff from the Lord, uh, from the Kansas City Chiefs, I suppose the recap that's worth hitting it is the Kansas City Chiefs playing San Francisco 49ers, a repeat of the Super Bowl from 2020, four years ago. And it is uh, the significance. It was massively significant back in 2020. And we made an emphasis out of uh, several things having to do with the fact that uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, this was the first Super Bowl in 50 years. So there was a jubilee attached to that. The San Francisco 49ers, 49, when you go to Leviticus 25, it would talk about the year of Jubilee. And there was a whole emphasis on that Jubilee comes when there's seven times seven, which is 49. So the 4950, um, there was this whole Jubilee theme and message. And the 49ers was about the 1849 uh, timeline where the gold rush was going. Yeah. This is into speaking into that. Again, and there is, you know, the scriptural, the scriptural foundation that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established, confirmed and then established. And so the fact that we heard that gave that message that there is it's a jubilee time that it really connects to uh, economic time as well. And so there's something just plus about both 
the chiefs in the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord will be exalted as chief of the mountains, Isaiah 2, 2. We pointed that out uh, back in 2020. And so that happens uh, again. They're also known as the Kansas City. The chiefs are called the kingdom. So it, it speaks well into a kingdom advancement. But the fact that the 49ers were there as well, it, it's speaking into the financial reality and the fact that it's a repeat from that, it means this is now it's firmly established. It's, the, it's that biblical principle of, yeah, you hear it one time, it means it's true. But when when it hits the second, then you know the thing is established. And so what was promised then is established now. It tied in with that Bob Jones prophetic word from many years ago. It's like the next time the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl, we will have entered a new era, basically the apostolic era. And, um, and so... It, it's not only remind me, Johnny, is this you're saying this is the first time they've been in the Super Bowl since no, no since 2020, the, 2020. OK, so in 2020, the exact same two teams from this. So last then, OK, so then what? Pardon me for interrupting. Though, so which time did that Bob Jones word kick in 2020 or 2020? It kicked in 2020. But okay. then there's a biblical and I see. Principle. I see. That when something is repeated, that's, that's when it's a sure thing. Uh, that's when it's established. And so sometimes yeah. uh, even, you know, out of the mouth of two or three yeah. witnesses, let a thing be established. And so um, if we're like, hey, all that stuff didn't happen. Well, this is the kick in for it. Furthermore, uh, it's the third Kansas City since 2020. This is the Kansas City Chiefs third Super Bowl title. Wow. And so and then three is takes it to the next level. You know, after two days, he'll raise us up. The third day, we will wow. resurrect. Jesus resurrected on the third day. Does, so does, Jesus, the, does the repetition mean the more it's repeated, the sooner, the more soon this thing is going to hit? Like, yes. Okay. It, it's not only that. Like Jesus over, uh, you know, Jesus overcame. Okay. So there's there's this, there's thing of on the, the third time around, um, yeah, you know, they've built it into our sports, even three strikes and you're out. There's something about the third, third time. And um, and so this is like the Lord telling the very same message, you know, like now it is for sure clear and established. Now, this is when it fully happens. You can say Jesus was in the process of resurrecting from the moment he got off the cross, but he didn't fully show up until day three. So we're in show up time. So it's a really, uh, you know, that's much more than that for the whole word. But that was a really encouraging uh, part of it. Yeah. So the part that we wanted to hit today and, and there's um, other parts we're not going to because this one the Lord built upon so much is the score itself. I think I mentioned it last week. and We didn't address the fact that the score was 25 to 22 Kansas City Chiefs, 25 San Francisco 49ers 22. And there's one book of the Bible that has at least 25 chapters, where chapter 25 has 22 verses. So wow. it only that exists one time in the Bible. So it's not that hard to figure out the scripture to be highlighted. And so that uh, is Psalms 25 and verse 22. And when I first read it, you're going to go, wait a minute, how's, how does that work with anything? And then we're going to go into it. Okay. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all their troubles. Now, on the part that you know is relevant is Israel right now has been in war for yeah. 140 days. And so what's amazing, in fact, uh, another throwaway is Psalm 25 is the winning. So, so 25 is the winning score. Psalm 25 is worth digesting spiritually. Um, and it's just, just a great, great um, chapter again with 22 verses. And it has uh, scriptures uh, such as verse 10, all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, all of them, but to such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. And um, at verse 13, he himself shall dwell in prosperity and his descendants shall inherit the earth and then the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him and he will show them his covenant 
And so this is all about trusting the Lord and not being ashamed. And, and, and that word uh, that's in verse three, indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed to deal treacherously without yeah. cause, very applicable. And that word ashamed is a, a Hebrew word that looks like bush, bush, B-U-W-S-H. Yeah. But it means to be disappointed, to become dry or delayed. So we understand there's many maybe even feel disappointed or they've become dry or delayed. So anyway, just that's a throw in extra. We, we're not going to take the time to go into chapter 25, but it is the winning score. It's a prophetic part of the message from the Super Bowl that that's a scripture that will bring you sustenance. And then it seems like David just out of the blue, it's disconnected. Even if you see the way in the King James or New King James, they'll write from between verse 21 and 22, there's just a space and it just seems random. He's not been talking about Israel and he just says, redeem Israel, O God, out of all their troubles. Now, this is where we get into an important part of the messaging today. And it's, it's going to be probably, it's not going to be intentionally controversial, but just the fact that there's so many opinions on Israel. And there's a yeah. lot right now. There's a lot dividing the patriot community and there is now this assigning of those who are Zionist and those who are not. And so the Zionists are, are being attacked as being excessively pro-Israel. And, and so there's debate going on. And I want to speak into that and try to bring some uh, clarity. And, and I think it will be seen that this is where can, the scripture can, please, Before you jump in. Can you give your definition of what is a Zionist compared to, let's say, another Christian who's pro-Israel who doesn't call him that? Can you try to define that term? Well, I will tell you. See, there's what it actually. I actually wrote down the definition. You didn't okay. know that. But oh, you no. led right into an actual okay. uh, part. Zionist, a person who believes in the development and protection of a Jewish nation in what is now Israel. Okay. So that was just the first definition uh, that I found. A person who believes in the development and protection of a Jewish nation in what is now Israel. It, it, in, in, you know, it is thought of as some sort of um, exceptionalism for, for Israel, that they're special and treasured yeah. uh, in some way. And then um, it can go excessive. There's almost a Christian Zionism version versus we'll say the Khazarian mafia uh, version of Zionism. And I'm going to hit that too, uh, Steve. So um, yeah, okay. coming here in a little bit as we get to some, some scriptures, because that's part of um, what we want to be able to differentiate in a, in a, in a, in a good way. And um, so I, I gave the title. I want to mention that because it's relevant to where we're going to, where we're going to go. I had I had um, I told Julie a title for this would be Israel, women, children, whatever. So it, that's the thing. If 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 you give them just blanket, um, there's a lot of just blanket. Whatever they do is righteous. So leave them alone. Don't touch them. You're touching God's eye. Mm. If you if you even address the fact that there may be some sin there, yeah. And, um, yeah. and so right up front, you know that's excessive. In fact. Um, and I'm going to recommend if you start listening to this, listen to the whole thing, because um, if you're out there, you can be misled by a direction. I go for a moment when I bring, we'll say, the balance of it from from the other side. But, um, you know, it's interesting when I was just down in McAllen, I was talking to a pastor. Um, he's actually Argentine by birth, but he and his wife had just served 21 years in Beersheba they, and they're out of you know, moved out of Israel back here for a while is too difficult. And so they, they were there though, when this, uh, the October seven, uh, called war and very near where all the attacks, um, broke out. And so, uh, they, he's just sharing me, sharing with me about Israel. You know, he's, he, he wasn't, it wasn't a very glowing report. It's just like mm. how in trouble, uh, the nation is, and he's, he gave me the numbers and I checked into it as well. He's like, you know, he's like 0.2% of the nation are believers, 0.2. Really? And so not 2%, but 0.2. So, um, and it's not just believers, but it's that, so 
do the numbers, it's 99.8% are not just not Christians, they are actually Jesus resistant. And we were having, that means they don't like Jesus mm. at all. Like, so for comparison, even if you go to Muslim nations and you say, well, the persecution is worse there, Muslim nations respect Jesus. I think he was a great prophet. Yeah. If you go to most Buddhist and Hindu expressions of it, there is there is a place where Jesus can fit. You know, they're just like mm -hmm. so many, so many spiritual expressions that he's there. But it's literally, um, and we were having the conversation that it's apparently the 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 most Jesus resistant nation on the planet. Really? Wow. Now, you know, I, I have to say, too, because I was doing just studying the word today and I, and I can't remember what sent me there. But I, that where Jesus said, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name. So he, we believers over here want G Jews to be saved and we say it. But the Jewish nation as a whole, I have no way. I thought there was supposedly a, an outbreak of. Revival, I guess I understood wrongly. Well, what is revival? And so we were going to get down. I'll just mention it now. May hit it a little bit more. There are um, this. This is these numbers have jumped compared to what they used to be for sure. There's fifteen to seventeen thousand, which would be Messianic Jews, which would be those that do receive Jesus Christ, uh, consider him their Lord and Savior. Hmm, okay. Even he was telling me this pastor that even among them, there's just still a lot of legalism, really lack of the Holy spirit, but at least they do qualify as those. And I honestly think most of what God is doing in Israel, he is doing with them in mind. And that's, he's building his plan around them. Just like he would build his plan around Caleb and Joshua hmm. uh, for going into the promised land when the children of Israel refused to do so. He, he built the whole plan around them. And, and so, but it causes us to rethink what's going on there right now. Yeah. Uh, especially if you just ask some, uh, you know, basic common sense questions. It's like, how did Israel lose their place in the promised land? Why were they kicked out to start with? If you go to the Old Testament, they were first warned, you know, for instance, for better than 40 years from Jeremiah. If you don't stop your Baal worship, if you don't start honoring God, you're going to be kicked out of your land and you're going to go into um, really all the prophets in, around then were some similar message taking place. So they lost they lost their nation originally for ignoring God. And um, and so the question is, have they really turned to God? And is this really the fulfillment of the scriptures? Um, many have been saying that, writing books on, yes, this is the fulfillment of it. Um, they're coming back to the Lord and this and that and the other. Well, the 99.8% are not. This is not, e even the, you know, the expressions of religion there are just distant from Jesus. Very distant. They don't accept Jesus or the Holy Spirit. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are not welcome there. And just because they are uh, in some Judaic tradition doesn't mean this is that they are not fulfilling the biblical grounds for a nation going back when he talks about the blessing and give him no rest till he makes Jerusalem a blessing in all the earth. Yeah. When you go to Jerusalem, you understand you look there, it's all conflict and it's religious conflict. It is it is not close to being a blessing in all the earth right yeah. now. So that's that's a reality that we have to uh, again by staying out of the ditches on either side by by right. and I'm going to stay out of the ditches. People notice it because you're going to think I'm in one ditch for a moment mm. and then I've jumped to the other ditch, but I'm not. You're a very I'm, wise man, John. <laughs> you're <doing> good. <laughs> you, you cannot replace Israel and the call on Israel, yeah. but nor can you just say they are in the midst of fulfilling all that was you know apply some Ezekiel scripture or any other scripture and say this is taking place right now. Because yeah. when we do, then all of a sudden we start sanctioning different leaders. We start saying the IDF and Benjamin Netanyahu and Mossad and these people are now representative of something godly and good. And there's a lot of question about that right now. Yeah, and it's, wow. and it's uh, in the process of being revealed. So let me um, let's keep going with that. Oh, he was also telling me that 70 percent of of the youth in Israel 
uh, are, have a serious drug problem. And it's like one of the worst rates in the world as well. And it has its highest agenda in Israel. So Israel's in trouble. So the scripture of redeem, redeem Israel, O God, out of all their troubles. They have a lot of troubles and it's not just Hamas. And, um, and so we want to be aware of that. But it's a Super Bowl message that in the midst of all this, while they're at war, he's going to do that. To me, it's a Super Bowl promise that he's in the promise of doing uh, process of doing that. The year of the open door. Part of what's taking place is that it's under great contention now. Um, but this is what we're headed towards. And, and so I uh, wanted to say that right up. Yeah. Front. So uh, we do know millions go to Israel and visit Israel really every year. And many are praying. It probably gets more prayer than any other place on the planet. It has, you can say the prayers haven't worked because we have point, <laughs> point two yeah, percent. But it doesn't I, mean it's not working. <laughs> but it, it's like it I, if I was going to be discouraged, you know, I don't feel discouraged. But if I was going to be this, that's a bad statistic. It's not your fault that, that you have to report the truth. But I mean, I had, I thought I'd heard reports about, you know, revival breaking out among the Jewish people. Maybe in that small numbers, it's still, I mean, we've sponsored three, two or three Ukrainian tours of Israel and they virtually all got saved. 300 and some, but, but they're U Ukrainian Jews. Yeah, that's, um, so that's amazing. Well, we'll get to a little bit of that too in just a second. So mm -hmm. the question is, is God going to bless Israel just because millions pray for her? And millions have decided the narrative for it and decided, yeah, this is it. This is the fulfillment of every, you know, since 1948, when Israel became a nation officially, this is it. This is the thing that God was promising and this is happening. And so is, is God going to do that just because outsiders can pray or does some point do the insiders need to walk in some openness to Jesus? And so, um, yeah. you know. I will wow. say the good the good news is there are a lot of believers that are committed to um, to Israel becoming this righteous place. And maybe we're not. I'm having to totally reconsider the process hmm. and I'll share uh, into into that a, wow. as well. So but when I say, you know, Israel, you. I'm just going to jump right into um, what I've sort of referred to. And, um, you know, Israel, what we're finding out more and more is really run, has been run by globalists. It has been run by the Rothschilds, um, by Rothschild pressure. Do you now, mean uh, even to the present day? Is that what you mean by that? I mean, absolutely to the present day. Okay. Uh, the Knesset, the Mossad, the, the families in power in Israel were basically positioned there by what we call um, and the Khazarian Jews. And I'm going to explain. And and this, and this I know there's a lot of nuances here that I'll probably hit, Steve. And if you see me miss it, then go ahead okay. and, and ask me. But I, I know the many nuances I need to cover um, uh, right now. But if people may not know, they'll go back to the Balfour Declaration of out of England that allowed for Israel to become a nation officially in 1948 uh, for the first time in 2000 years, seemingly breaking uh, an impossibility. Uh, that's one of the reasons why replacement theology came around. It's like, well, there's no way it can actually be about natural Israel because Israel hadn't been a nation in 2000 years. And so it's not ever going to be. Then suddenly it was. Mm -hmm. And so everybody sees the handiwork of God in that. But in quote, in reality, um, it was the Rothschilds and who were heading up the world cartel banking and have for 400 years and have funded both sides of every war for the last 400 plus years. They're the ones that put pressure on Lord Balfour and therefore they created the foundations of Israel. And so every foundational institution comes monetized from those that we recognize as, you know, we, we tie them into those who took our Republic from us in the United States in 1871 and the banking cartel. And so the reality is um, why we get confused and why we have this infighting going on in the Patriot community and some of the infighting in the body of Christ is 
We've assumed that when Israel as a nation makes a decision, it's the same thing as blessed Israel making a decision. And it should be easy for us in light of what's going on in our own nation to see that that's not the case. Um, I think, you know, we have this word for us, the patriots, and a patriot by and large, is going to be someone who does not agree with his present president and Congress and Senate and most institutions, because there's an understanding we've been hijacked. Yeah. We've been we've been uh, we've been actually separated from the way it's supposed to be. And of course, in the United States, it's supposed to be a we the people uh, movement. And then that's being represented there. So it's not hard to to consider. In fact, this statement I make that you're your in quote, your protectors are your executors. It's actually a United States reality. It's a world reality in the sense of who's supposed to protect you from health, uh, health considerations, the World Health Organization. So you run, yeah. to we're there to help you get through your pain and disease. No, they're causing pain and disease. Yeah. It, it shouldn't be considered that. It's a shocking statement if you just say, Israel, your uh, in quote, protectors are your executors. This is what has been the discovery for us at a worldwide level. And it used to be true, not to get off in the whole thing, but it used to be true when I grew up, if they had the FDA stamp of approval, that meant the food was safe. And it doesn't mean anything at all like that. No, it. Uh, they are. we are being pumped with all kinds of um, artificial, bad-for-you food, and it's really, really showing up in, in the the next generation right now it's like there are more allergies more deficiencies more defectiveness and 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 they're like why is everybody sick why is everybody having so and so problems and and uh, and, and so you know at my daughter's level their friends it's like it's a 90 percentile um health considerations of things we never faced at all really? when we we're, were young there's a reaping of it with and we know it's tied You're in saying her generation her generation has that many more problems that we didn't have is that what you, what you mean by that absolutely there's um just like you know justice herself she's told her story endometriosis and things that go after women's reproduction uh reproduction system in different ways yeah. and pains and things and it's just yeah it existed in the generation because they were already working towards that but it's just at an unimaginable level and then you go at the mental health level it's like they all um uh, the, you know, incredible attacks of panic, uh, insecurity, um, that, you know, the counseling, there's like, well, we think you're uh, uh, bipolar and OCD. And it's like they're needing counsel in an unprecedented level and they're just having pains and difficulty. And then the young men at that age are like the, a doctor we know said, Johnny, like he says that all the young men between 20 and 30, I don't know if it's 20 and 40 that are coming in, their um, testosterone count is just like. You. There's been something designed to stop reproduction at, as as well. And so it's by following whatever has been um, the health guidelines. And so you're doing stuff like I'll say it again here. For instance, cholesterol, there's such a, a lying mafia around that design uh, to make you sick and also for them to make millions of dollars. And so they're now saying, the, uh, you know, some that are doing the more serious investigating, go ahead and check it out. Uh, uh, people is that um, the the medicines for cholesterol, is it the statins? They're actually yeah, causing the statins. They're like the number one cause for dementia because you are starving your brain. The fatty stuff that needs that they're saying get out of your don't allow it to be in your system. Your brain is starving, not getting enough food, and and so I heard. I just recently heard a doctor. I'm not giving my own thing, but he's like, if 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 you're under 450 in your um, in your cholesterol level, you should not be concerned. Your body is just doing what it needs to do in order to stay. Uh, balanced and attacked. You know, says, when I when I grew up, they talked about this evil substance, cholesterol. Oh yeah. no! But they never told me, uh, Steve. Cholesterol is a hormone created by God. They never said that, even though it is. So you see, you see what I'm saying. So the fourth, and they say the 450. It it doesn't even still mean you should take any cholesterol medicine. It's just like okay, 
that's just a little bit excess your body. Now, what else might be going wrong for it to be yeah. producing that much? But then you go to the blood pressure thing, a whole con built into that where um, the blood, every single blood pressure medicine is going to have serious repercussions uh, coming to you. And so everything that you are trusting, uh, again, your healers, your so we're seeing that that's a reality. That's part of the whole awakening. The pain is for the awakening. Awakening is for your children because our children have been suffering the most. And so it applies uh, to Israel in, in, in order to keep us on track here for our time as well, Steve. When you get back to the Israel component of it and, and specifically, <clears throat> but it, it does allow you to understand yeah. in, in seeing what we've been doing that shouldn't be unusual. And perhaps those of you who are just locked, locked yourself into a perspective of Israel. No, Israel can do no wrong. Benjamin Netanyahu, everything he does must be God because he is the president of uh, of Israel. And so therefore they're the anointed, appointed and all that. No, um, there, there has to be a different level of processing of what's actually uh, uh, taking place. And so in a practical way, what took place October 7, where uh, it, it's just all those who know about Israel's security, which is the best in the world. There is no way that Hamas comes in and does what they do for hours unhindered unless somebody has called for a stand down. <coughs> stand down so, of, the, as the, of the Israeli army of the defense. Yes. Someone had to. Someone had to. I mean, it's logical. They're right? having it's, it's logical, and they're having protests by the tens of thousands and demands for Benjamin Netanyahu to stand down um, because it's just too unbelievable that they would come and be able to do that and do it for so many hours, unstopped, un, uh, um, you know, unperceived yeah. Yeah. when they would. I do remember uh, when I was I, I've been to both. I've been taken by Israeli forces to borders on both sides is like if a gnat crosses over we know it and so and and they have multiple levels of security and so they're supposed protectors so that reality is taking place in israel and so when he's saying he's coming to redeem redeem while well, he would say redeem israel oh god out of all their troubles first thing they need to be redeemed at more more dangerous than hamas more dangerous than Muslim neighbors are internal, these, and there's another biblical name, these who say they are Jews and are not. I was going to ask you about that. Revelation 3.8, I think, I was, I was going to ask you that question. Does that refer to this time or, or can it refer to this time? It can. It's uh, Revelation 3.9. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Yeah. And there's another there's a different application for it. But we understand this is really uh, there's a there's a practical storyline I've shared before uh, on a program maybe a year ago. I don't know about the Khazarian mafia mm -hmm. and, and the Khazarian Jews. And I'll just say the briefest um, understanding of it and how this applies uh, to them, <clears throat> because um, it's about a thousand years ago. Really, this is these are almost like marauding tribes, not like tribes of the tribe of Israel, but um, they were they're based out of the Ukraine, um, ironically or not, based out of Kiev. And these were those that were would go around, take new lands, and they were known they had brought the Babylonian. <clears throat> the story goes that he who led, I believe, was a czar of Russia when he had won a battle against him, gave him an option. And in some way or another, this is a truth that they were told again, a thousand years ago, you must choose a religion. You all are worthless people. You're not training your kids into any kind of civility, reasonableness. And he gave them a choice of the three uh, Abrahamic religions and the three Abrahamic um, religions being either at the time we'd say Catholicism, Christianity. Um, the other one is Islam and the other one is Judaism. And so, they, in a very pragmatic way, the Khazarians chose Judaism because um, the Pope was what, and the Vatican, they were very hands on, uh, forcible um, con conversions. Um, and so th it was not a light, uh, not a light thing to go under that, nor was it Islam. 
Um, mm. there's, it's a heavy yoke on both. And so Judaism would leave them alone. And so they, they, they did some things of incorporating um, some level of, uh, you know, they weren't, first of all, um, they were not Semites. They were not out of Shem. They didn't come from Abraham. They were out of Japheth. And um, and so there's somebody wrote a book even out of Israel, a, a Jew, I think it's called the 13th tribe or something like that. He tells about them. So this group of Khazarians, those who are forced to convert to Judaism, at least as an appearance, as a mask. Um, th this is the group that then went into European Judaism as well. And mainly what was what was there. And. Um, you, you say if you look for the in quote, in quote mo, more pure blooded uh, Jews would be the Sephardic. And many of them may be like in Central and South America. There's many Sephardic Jews just in Latin America. Do they go by any other names that mean the same thing that we would recognize like the this group? <clears throat> well, you know, there is an association made that I don't 100 percent. I can't vouch for it in every kind of way. But those that go by Ashkenaz. Uh, okay. Jews will be associated in some way with a Khazarian. And, um, but you can't say 100% that yeah. a Khazarian Jew is not a Jew at all because, because they adapted and adopted uh, Judaism. They did in some measure begin to mix. And over the years and centuries, actually, they've done more mixing. But at the elite level, the biggest thing to be aware of is at the elite level, at those who hold the money and the power, the bankers. Um, and this is where you look at this is where the Rothschilds and really the Rockefellers have a, a, a root system from that as well. Um, most of the things you look at that are, uh, it's amazing how many things have the uh, the Jewish name, Epstein, there was Weinstein, yeah. Weinstein you know, from uh, the Me Too movement. And so you yeah. have, so there is a growing anti-Semitism in the world and anti-Zionism because they keep realizing these figures of in incredible evil uh, um, are they have Jewish names and Berg and Stein and different things like that but what's not being noted um, we'll, we'll just say where it's going too far and that's going to go to a clear statement I want to get it from how I, how I wrote it here in just a second how it's going too far is um, is taking that reality the fact that there are a there's a Khazarian mafia of the elite that have even watched their bloodlines in their own kind of way. And, and they're not looking out for Jewish bloodline. They're looking out for their bloodline. It's a religious cult, but mm. they've managed to hide themselves in Judaism. Mm. And by hiding themselves in Judaism and being um, those who've practiced horrible evil, um, they have been, uh, they have brought hatred to Jews in general. So they are a source, a cause for anti-Semitism because people lump them all together. Again, for our cases, like go to another place. and What's the solution? Where does the Christian get in there and figure it out? Or well, that's how we're trying, to, we're trying to go today because, yeah. you know, prophets are accused. They, it's going around like yeah, all the prophets are Zionist. And so if you speak up on behalf of, of Israel, which you really have to do if you follow prophecy and if you follow the scripture then you're considered a zionist and a zionist for them actually though are these kazarians and so here's here's the statement uh, anti-semitism is demonic and long-standing okay people i'm gonna say that one more time anti-semitism is demonic and land long-standing and don't fall for it don't fall for it okay. now okay. and but anti-kazarian mafia is not anti-semitism so to be, but they've tried, that's part of the game they played. The Rothschilds and the rest of these have hid themselves behind every time they get uh, signaled for something. Every time it's like you, Brent, your banks are running the whole world. This is anti-Semitism. They have hidden behind it. They have manipulated the narrative with it. And so uh, I have no problem saying I am anti-Kazarian mafia. I am pro-Semite. Uh, and so we have to be okay. Don't don't put them together on the same thing. Can I got... give you an, a practical question on that one? There, there were these rabbis in New York in tunnels. Johnny, what is a Christian to do and say? 
Is a Christian to say they're not even Jews, they're fake Jews? Or are the Christian to say, look, if they're real Jews and they're doing that? Well, we what? do want to see the rest of that. That's that. There's a, I have a very, uh, there's parts yellow flag, part red flag on mm -hmm. like what we just discovered with that, with the pictures and the reports. And we're in need of a more full report on that Chabad um, yeah. organization. But it's like, it certainly looks like they've been connected to the Khazarian mafia yeah. in some way. And they're, they're going in, you know, under the Orthodox um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, dress of all. And so it's like, and talk about the, the complicatedness of the day we're in. The infiltration we found is total. It's everywhere. It's in the body of Christ. We have things being exposed. But you have this thing. There's things that look like traditional Judaism. And it looks like it's dressed in Israel. And, and they're going to have the, you know, whatever, all the Israel symbolism, the flag and star of David. But they're actually not pro their own nation. And, and, um, wow. and they're so used. Confusing. So yes. confusing. Wow. So we, we have, uh, um, and so it's significant what the Lord says through the Super yeah. Bowl message in the score that the only book in the Bible that has 25 chapters and 22 verses exactly is Psalm 25. The whole Psalm is wonderful, but it's redeem Israel, O God, out of all their troubles. Israel is there and the troubles happen to be because it is so complex to even talk about and discuss, but we're doing that because it's, it's a, of necessity. We have to yeah. clarify this. And even perhaps for next week, questions that come out of our conversation this yeah. time, any, any further, and, and I'm not done making the points here and we got to get to it. We're good, but we got to get to the scriptures, especially that are relevant uh, um, for us today. But yeah. uh, we want to understand that Mossad, the media from Israel, the Knesset, the government, it's not necessarily Israel uh, in God's eyes right now. This could be this Khazarian mafia that has actually hijacked Israel. Israel could be hostage to uh, the people that we're saying everything they do is righteous. They could be the hostage holders. You know, they're the ones, it, again, like our nation, we're, yeah. we're a little bit hijacked by evil in, in high places. So, um, <clears throat> so I think I made that um uh, I'm looking at my notes. I want to jump on through the stuff I can so I can make sure to get to. OK, so uh, it's just interesting that the 49ers are the ones that lost. And so Israel was in 48 that they, be, they became a nation and kind of fully established in 49 for the first time in 2000 years. And that just ties into the score of the Super Bowl. But I, actually, I didn't even need to bring that up for where we're going because it's a small enough point And then yeah. it needs clarification moving forward. I want to make sure I get to. Uh, I get to it, but I'm going to say it again. October 7, it okay. seems like some Khazarian power uh, inside of Israel called for a stand down, stand down of defense versus Hamas, mm -hmm. whom it looks like they also funded. And actually, there's not really a, any doubt they originally funded Hamas in order to be the op opposition to PLO. And so you have whoever called the stand down and, and um, is ones that are also funded Hamas. And so who's the one that's paying the price for it all are Israel's people. Israel needs to be prayed for like never before, but don't be praying for Benjamin Netanyahu and the Knesset and all these places where the, the, the Khazarian mafia is actually ruling. Hey, can you just, uh, you're, you're serious when you just said, don't be praying for Net Benjamin Netanyahu. Well, I, I know it's controversial because yeah. different ones are saying, and I'll just say, I spoke on his behalf for years as well. Uh, um, and it's because I was shown by the Lord, he was supposed to be leading is Israel at that time. And, uh, but something has shifted and changed. I don't know if something shifted and changed in his heart and it could shift back there, but I, I'm more making a point about what he represents. Okay. Um, I, there's a big question mark on Benjamin Netanyahu right yeah. now. And I'll just say that if it, if it bears, if it pulls, you know, if it comes through that he's actually been a good guy and behind and he's making it look like he's somebody else in order so he could help expose this element in, in Israel. I would love that. I would love that to bear out. And and I hope so. But I'm saying don't think of when you're praying for Israel that you're just praying for official Israel. They don't know what was released into their body that wasn't healthy for them. Some attempt at another level of um Holocaust. I know that's saying something st uh, strong, but it bears out with what's uh, what's already out there. It's just not totally accepted at main and quote mainstream media, which is disappearing. 
Uh, but by the reports coming out, these doctors, 31,000 doctors that are now telling us like, number one, the masking didn't work, was bad for our health. The six foot feet of separation didn't work, was not helpful to our, uh, um, the locking down in every way was bad for you. Uh, the thing, there's good people within there. That's why I pray for Israel, full of good people. But it's, it's run by a, a mafia that's dangerous. And so don't become a hater of the people because they're run by dangerous no. uh, ones. And so that's that's the message um, to us. Oh, my God, I got to get to the scriptures here. So um, let's get to um, what I'm just going to say this part real quick. Theodore Herzl, who's credited as the one, the original Zionist. If you look at him, Theodore has Herzl, 1896. He made a declaration. You know, he's not going to rest till in Palestine shall be for the Jews. And um, what's interesting about him, people, some people know that, some people don't. He spoke neither Hebrew nor Yiddish. He had no Jewish education, thoroughly secular, was not spiritually driven. Really? Interesting. But he was driven by seeing the dark underbelly of extreme European anti-Semitism. And that's that extreme European anti-Semitism, which ended being just the seedbed for Hitler and all that, was built around the fact that they are in positions of manipulating economies and power and made people very angry. And again, doing this thing of throwing in all Jews with those who are leading, leading them. And so uh, say it again, anti-Semitism is demonic, but being aware of the Khazarian and quote Jew nature of this global cabal is not. So you are not an anti-Semite because you've noticed the Khazarian mafia Jew component of the global mafia and there is a much deeper um dive on that so to speak mm. so they were uh, all right so here's the scripture uh, that's what we want to be able to hit in our um in, in the in our time that remains here um is is particularly the words of apostle paul we'll hit one verse from uh peter because we want to go to the new testament instruction on it uh, and I have to uh, now I'm going to be hitting against replacement theologies. People mm. are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Jews, they failed. They're sinners and all that. And uh, they're doing terrible and all this. It's, forget it. They're done for. It's like, what did Paul say? So let's look at Romans chapter nine. And let's start when in verse one. Let's see. So this is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, I tell the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my countrymen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God and the promises of whom are the fathers and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came who is overall the eternally blessed God. Amen. Shocking statement where the apostle Paul says, I would rather, when he says a curse, like lose my salvation and know that my own Jewish people could be reached for God. Mm. So it's, you know, we know Paul wasn't a replacement theologist in that kind of yeah. way. If that, that statement is worth saying again, because we're going to prove that again here, we're going to see Paul was not, a replacement theologist. Mm -hmm. And he just made that um, statement. But he says something in verse um, six as well. But it is not that the word of God has taken no effect, for they are not all Israel who are of Israel. There's kind of, again, nor are they all children because they are the seed of Abraham. But in Isaac, your seed shall be called. That is those who are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as a seed. So it's prioritizing because people will say, well, Abraham's father of all them, uh, you know, Arabs and Muslims and things like that. But it clearly says the children of the promise, the original promise. And it's the promise of through where Jesus would come through was through Isaac. And so there is a, a, a pointing out of that taking place. And I'm going to leave some things unanswered because of time right there. And it can be a question either by you, Steve, or afterwards, uh, you know, if we go towards uh, next next week. So when he says Isaac, though, the promise is through Isaac. There is also a symbolic parallel taking place because Isaac is a type 
of Jesus. Instead of him having to do Isaac, but it was symbolically he was willing to lay down his Isaac. It's the same as the father laying down his son, Jesus. Mm. So there's an application. So even in, in what took place there, it is steering us to Jesus. And we're going to hit over and over that that is ultimately the door for even all Jews. There is no secondary uh, covenant that's part of the on one ditch. Those who are so pro-Israel, they will uh, they will, um, you know, they will say, no, they're in. They're going to make it into heaven, whether they go through Jesus or not, because there's some promises given to Abraham. There is no promises given to Abraham. There's no scriptures of the Old Testament that justify in any way that a Jew will make it into heaven apart from the door of Jesus Christ. And so that's just yeah. has to be clear as can be um, uh, for us. Yeah. So um, we go then down to chapter 10 of Romans, and he speaks again. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. So this is Paul. He's staying on theme. OK, there are some scriptures we skipped over as well, but he's on theme. This is a passion of his heart. He's like, I'll even be willing to be lost in order for them to come back. And he says, because they're the ones that were given everything. They were given the promises. And, and you know, we're not even going through all the things that 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 were just spoken of in chapter nine. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Um, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness. And you can see that the legalism, the legalism of the, of the Pharisees, you go there and you see the legal things that you have to do. And, and, you know, down to extremes on, on how you eat and don't eat and what you do. You can't push the button on the elevator on Saturdays because you're working then. And uh, they being ignorant of God's righteousness. So all that, anything that, uh, any religious tradition that has you being justified by those type of acts is something that's ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Paul makes it very clear. Christ is the end. The end of the law is not that you were promised um, something uh, apart from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the connector for how you get to eternal life and ultimately mm. all the blessings that were spoken um, over over Israel. So <clears throat> let's now jump to um, chapter 11 of Romans. And if you have, I have the New King James Version, and it says at the headline, heading of that chapter, Israel's rejection, not total. I say then, has God cast away his people? Certainly not. Okay. So just if the, we only read that phrase for replacement theologists, I don't know what else you need other than has God cast away his people? Has he rejected them? Certainly not. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. Um, so he's making that and I'll, I'll finish reading that verse. Or do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel saying, um, actually, I'm going to stop um, uh, because there's not that much to get out of the next little bit. But that was that was the important part right there. Paul is sharing his heart in chapter nine. He's like, I would lose my salvation if I knew Israel could be saved. Then he goes to the next chapter and he's like, um, Man, they're the ones that that should have it is that in my prayer for them is that they be saved. And you're like, yeah, yeah. Well, so far, it doesn't look like they're they're back in. And so now is um, uh, the key part we want to we want to look at starting in 11, 11, appropriately enough, where it goes under Israel's rejection, not final. I say, then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Certainly not. But through their fall, to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. It means all those who are not Jews, the nations. Now, if their fall is riches for the world and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? He's making a difference between their fall and their fullness. So there is going to be a fulfillment for them. I won't stop yet and talk more about it because he's going to hit on it 
uh, again, for I speak to you Gentiles in so much as verse 13, I am an apostle to the Gentiles. I magnify my ministry. If by any means I may provoke to jealousy those who are my flesh and save some of them. For if they're being cast away, verse 15, for if their being cast away is the reconciling of the world, because that's what gave an open door to the rest of the world as they failed, goes in the prophets spoke of God having to divorce them for having been unfaithful to him for so long, multi-generationally. What will their acceptance be? But so he points out that the Lord used even their defaulting on the covenant from their end to allow all nations to now have an access to it. And he says, now, how much more is it going to be if that was a blessing to the world? What about when at least a remnant comes back to him the way they're supposed to? For if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. And down to verse 17, and if some of the branches were broken off and you being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with him became a partaker of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Do not boast against the branches. Do not boast against Israel. Do not say they have been replaced. They're no longer of any value or importance. But if you do boast, remember that you do not support the root, but the root supports you. So practical understanding here, the root and the way it's all explained, and we'll, we'll see if I get a chance to actually do all the scriptures uh, um, to validate what I'm saying, if we have the time to do so, but this will still be the truth. The we are all uh, the connection to Abraham. It's the faith of Abraham that actually what we connected to as well. This is what the scriptures will will lay out. It's built on the root is Abraham, but not Abraham's blood. It's not Abraham's Jewish blood that we pile on. It's Abraham's faith. In God, by faith, Abraham did what he did. And so it's not, I say it once more time, it's not Abraham's Jewishness that we yeah, build. That's, on. that's it's huge. Faith. It's huge. It's a huge difference because people say, bless those, I'll bless those that bless you. And everyone says, that means you're blessing the Jews. And that's, I don't know if that's the, if that's the primary reason you know, because if you're blessing Israel, you're blessing the man of faith, not the man of the law. I don't know. It is. And so they get to. And so their access, then why Abraham is advantageous to them is because of his faith, not because of his Jewish blood. Yeah. And so even and it says it in what I'm going to read right now. We're still in Romans 11. Therefore, consider the goodness, the verse 22, the goodness and severity of God on those who fell severity, but towards you goodness, if you continue in his goodness, otherwise you also will be cut off. And they also, now speaking, they also is of Israel. If they do not continue in unbelief, I just stop there. If they do not continue in unbelief. So there is not this uh, holy religious blessing guaranteed on them as they remain in, in, in unbelief. And 99.8% of citizens of Israel, well, all those who are under the Jewish, because there's Arab and there's Christians in there as well, but those who go under the Jewish name tag will say, 998 are in unbelief. So he says, if they do not continue in unbelief, we'll be grafted in. So how can we say it another way? Those who will believe in Jesus will be grafted in. There is no grafting in because you're Jewish and Abraham was Jewish. You're grafted in because Abraham had faith and you have faith. This is a clarification that is so neat. For God is able to graft them in again. So that goes into they're not replaced forever. God is able to graft the Jews in again. And he says, it if this is something God's going to do, uh, it's his heart as Paul. He's like you said, I'd be accursed so that they could do this. And I'm sure that he is going to regraft them in. For if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, were grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree. How much more? How much more will these who are natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? There he is making the definitive prophetic declaration. They're going to be. And you're like, was that 100 percent? Is that all is whatever? Well, it's it's a representation. It's something that that, uh, you know, constitutes Israel. Um, 
And last thing, for I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved. And it goes into a, a verse uh, there. So there is some mystery and there's, you know, uh, uh, it's not so much mystery. It just requires careful processing of what's being said there. So you don't go from one ditch to the other ditch. But I also want to, uh, I think it's the last scripture we'll read on it as we close, just to get Peter's um, a little bit of his take on it as as well. So first Peter chapter two, first Peter chapter two, he goes on a discourse on the chosen stone and his chosen people. And that's going to be starting in, in verse four. And this is to assist us in, in what we're doing right now is is making sure we're not in the wrong ditch. Make sure we're not making enemies we don't need to be making, making sure we're not making stands we're not needing to make. And perhaps if this would get out to the Patriot community, some processing for yourselves so you don't. Again, there's kind of two groups forming. They're saying they're the Zionists and they're like uh, and they're, and so the ones that aren't are saying, man, they don't don't they know they're the Khazarians? Well, they're not necessarily they're not necessarily. I mean, I'm saying this over and over again. They're not necessarily that group at all. There is we just have to separate the elite rulers of Israel, the Khazarian mafia that uh, that runs it all with the Jews. There's 70 nations. Well, the last I knew, I think there's more. 70 nations have Jewish people that have come from them to Israel. And honestly, I believe the Lord is actually developing his plan around the 15 to 17,000 Messianic Jews because they are the believers. This plan gets built around the believers. If they continue not in unbelief. So those that go to the Holy Land and do so on behalf of believers, they get looked at. And even if they're minuscule, minuscule, and they don't get looked at, they don't get valued uh, by anybody else. They're the ones um, that are, are driving God's agenda in the same way Joshua and Caleb were driving the agenda in that day. So here we go because of time. First Peter 2, 4. Coming to him as to a living stone rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up. Acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone elect mm -hmm. precious and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. So what you could miss there, because there's people like, no, Zion is always talking about natural Israel. Well, Paul, I mean, Peter lets it be known here when the scripture says, I lay in Zion a cornerstone. He is talking about Jesus being yeah. that stone. And he who believes on him yeah. gets it with being in the proper Zion. And so we want to get that just as clear as can be and not be mixing and matching uh, uh, matters that really aren't biblically based at all. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed. But you are a chosen generation. Now, we're going to hear these things that will say the ones that over... Um, value Israel. Uh, they, they usually will call Israel this. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. So is he talking about the nation of Israel? Well, clearly that's not what he's saying here. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. This is clear. It's on those who believe on him. So it's Jesus Christ based. Those um, who find salvation through him, they're the holy priesthood. They're the chosen people. So you, people go, yeah, see, it's replacement theology in that kind of way. It's, it's not in the way you're saying that he throws away, ignores Israel, and there's no more passion. Paul does present the Lord's perspective on his heart for Israel, on their being re-grafted uh, mm -hmm. in 
but it is it, it takes some uh, conversation uh, in, in doing that. So I think I got that out there where it's clear. And what is there anything there? Uh, yeah, Steve? I just yeah, I have a, just a couple of questions. I've been holding them to uh, make sure you get those scriptures in. Um, I, and I don't. I, I'm asking this for myself, but I'm also asking it. For, I think for a lot of people, I don't think I, you don't need to give a really long answer. But I want to clarify. I remember when I was in high school, uh, Christian high school, taking hearing about the Balfour Declaration, which was the initiation of the state of Israel and all that stuff. But you talked about it was the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds that were really behind that. Does that invalidate God's use of that for to bring Israel back to its own land? Or can they be simultaneous events? God, the enemy trying to be manipulative with the Rothschilds initiates Israel, and then God's will is being uh, come into being all at the same time? That is really such a good question, um, Steve, and I'm glad you asked it because I'm sure that would be one for us next week waiting for us. Okay. And and you said it right in what you're saying right there at the end, or, or can God's plan play out this way? Not only can it, it does over and over and over. The cross was not a spiritual thing. The cross was clearly a demonic idea, a, yeah. a demonic tool. Uh, and, and then there's a decree that because Esther does her intercession, um, the king makes a decree that you can take out all your enemies. And so the day that Israel was supposed to be losing um, their lives in masses, they this was a time they had a great victory. But it's, it's over and over and over. If you go to the storyline we've hit several times in the last couple of years, Second Chronicles 2020, and then I won't give any more examples for time's sake, but it was Jehoshaphat, the great victory they ended up having where they had three days of spoil and uh, spoil by taking all the riches of the nations. And so what was that initiated by? That was initiated by the enemy. They surrounded Israel. They wanted to take them out. God turns their evil plan into something we know David and Goliath and the promotion of David. It was Goliath who came into the Philistines, came into land of Judah. So yes, this happens all the time. I do believe that the Lord to be very specific connecting it. Like, so are you saying therefore it was the Rothschilds that did the 1948 thing and therefore it's invalid or the handwork of God is there. I think the handiwork of God is there. And it, you know, it so happened that it happened at the same time. There's the discovery of these scrolls and the, oh, wow. Interesting. and the same time that we have the healing revival breakout in America, 1948. So there's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and those things happen together. And you're like, oh, oh, I think God was orchestrating this. And then Satan finds out again what he keeps finding out over and over and over. He's a tool. He's a tool of God. <laughs> He's a tool in more ways than one. Well, listen, okay, I, I, I got this other one, and that right. is uh, um, we talk about there's large swaths of the body of Christ who, who for years and decades, every Sunday, even their particular pastor may be focused on, here's Israel, and here's what's happening in Israel. This is why things are wrapping up now, why the rapture has to be now. And then, of course, it always has to do with because Israel's doing this, this many people, the 1948, you addressed it. So I'm wanting to clarify. And then just right there towards the end, you sort of re-clarified that there's really only 15 to 17,000 believers somewhere in there in Israel. Then are you saying what's going to happen with Israel is just fine to happen if it only happens with 15 to 17,000 people? God, could that could be fulfilled fulfillment of some scriptures, whether it's not the rapture. I'm not trying to prove the rapture. I'm just saying, can fulfillment of whatever it's talking about be with only 15 to 17,000? Because it sounds like you're saying it can be with only 15 to 17,000. Yeah. And of course, I disagree totally with the whole thing that the rapture right. ties in. It has the connection that people make with that. And so right. that's, that's where we go wrong. Yeah. But just this does have to be considered. Like I said, I'm having to consider new possibilities. Like yeah. in the same way that Abraham found like he had a false start by going with Ishmael. Yeah. Um, we could find out we've had a false start on Israel. Okay. And that it's still going to happen, yeah. but there could be 
that could help some of you from getting shipwrecked in your faith if it looks like Israel is lost for again. Like I, I'm saying, I have to be open to a possibility. I haven't heard the Lord on this yeah. that Israel could cease being this Israel because it's not the right Israel yet, or he could make this Israel the right Israel because he does what he always does. He supersedes and co-ops. Well, and isn't the, isn't the requirement, and I mentioned this earlier, Jesus looked and cried over Israel and said, you won't see me again because you rejected me at this time. You won't see me again until you, I guess, redeemed Israel, say, blessed is he, Jesus, who's coming in the name of the Lord. And since that's not happening, Unless you say 15,000 is enough. And again, we're not talking about the rapture. We're talking about the nation coming to the to, to Christ, I guess, is the context. Yeah. Um, and those are things don't know for sure. Okay. You know, there is there's a, a way to look at that. The, even the, you know, it's 15, 17,000 sounds like not much, but yeah. I don't know what it is. It's like it's not we're not that far removed from when there was only 100. Or, okay. or left. I mean, like okay. I think 1948, when they became a nation, I don't believe there was a hundred. Okay. I don't believe there was a hundred believers. So if you look at it that way, and it's like, okay, it's made it to 15 or 17,000. Um, then it's like, wow, there, you know, it's, it's a big deal from that, from that standpoint. But there's a part of it that if you just back up and say, does this look like a blessed nation, the fruit of it, what's going on, what's happening with 0.2% uh, uh, um, believers, the, which is the guideline for Israel being blessed. And the guideline for Israel being blessed is not having, I've got to say this one more time, I feel like the Holy Spirit says it, it's not having the blood of Abraham. It's having the faith of Abraham. Yeah. And so the faith of Abraham, so you, you've got a nation that's 99.8% resistant to Jesus. Um, because whether it's the secular, whether it's the Orthodox, whether it's the ultra-Orthodox, Every other expression of Jewish religion or secularness resists Jesus Christ. And there's almost it doesn't there's no other nation. Uh, we Again, we'll see if somebody can point it out to us. It doesn't make it, it would still be not many nations if there are that have resisted that are in that much open resistance to their actual Messiah, their actual savior, the actual source of blessing. The whole, all the prophetic words of the Old Testament of when Israel would be then blessed in the end. And a lot of people are already saying that's now because 1948 happened and this and that and the other. Well, there, there's not enough, um, uh, there apparently is not enough human obedience in that land. We do know the Lord does this thing if they're 10, you know, the yeah. whole song tomorrow thing. Um, so well, it is to be processing. And let me ask, okay, final one, okay, then, I, then I'll, I'll be done. But I think a bunch of people who are watching the from the 40,000 foot level and they'll say, look, Steve and Johnny, everything you're saying, I'm agreeing. But how do we answer the fact that a sovereign God oversaw the Yom Kippur War, allowing Israel to, to survive when there's no way they should have been? And then there's the, I, I can't remember if that's the same as the six year day. The 1972. I, I don't know all the the dates, but at least on two occasions and maybe three, they survived when there's no way they should have. It's as if God said, "Until you have a chance to serve me, I'm still going to watch over you because you're the apple of my eye." I don't know. What would you say about that? Well, I think there are multiple of those stories that just sh sh seem to show the handiwork of God. At this point, uh, Israel just has atomic and more weapons. They have so much firepower. They yeah. literally don't need the supernatural stories. But in their oh, 19, 1948 to 1967, that whole the formation when Jerusalem finally came back under under Israel, that was a time where it was the Lord protecting him over and over. And I didn't even go. And I have to say this or this is not a, a, a good conclusion where, where there are question marks about Israel and question marks about does Israel have to have Israel as a nation in order to justify fulfillment jerusalem is another story jerusalem is give him no rest until jerusalem is a blessing because jerusalem is not supposed to be considered the capital of jewish people it's mm. the capital of spiritual zion and so we know jerusalem 
has to be prayed for. Jerusalem is to be visited. Jerusalem, give him no rest till he makes True. Jerusalem a blessing. It doesn't all. say Israel, it says Jerusalem, doesn't it? It's over and over and over yeah, Jerusalem. So we mixed and matched things. We assumed yeah. certain certain things. And there's some of it, it's, it's a mystery that's getting, uh, in some ways, um, unraveled and clearer. And some parts of it, uh, I've been spending a lot of time with the Lord on this and looking at books related and asking him, for clarification, because I realized I had some lumping in together of yeah. some things as well. Um, but I believe he's at work and I believe he is working with, I believe the Messianic community there is a big, big, big deal. It's a bigger deal than the Knesset, Benjamin Netanyahu, the IDF, other things. Whoever's not a believer, he is going, he's, he's aware of them and he's working on a plan. Um, and, and that's, restore that back to our original theme 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 verse that we're talking about redeem israel out of all their troubles there's something he's working on there's something about he's not going to start something with a nation israel and not bring some not bring them back s- somehow into some yeah. sort of you know they, they're still going to have to do it his way it's like the yeah. prodigal son even if they are the prodigal son that comes back they're going to have to come back to the father well, i mean he's the, the kind of a god that or at least now and then once or twice says i look for a man to stand in the gap and i found none, so i i swore by myself i'm going to do this or that right we know he's done that at least once or maybe twice, probably billions of times. But you know what I mean? Okay, yes. well, good stuff, Johnny. Well, listen, um, I appreciate that. Why don't you go ahead, if you want to, and pray for the people as we close All right, let me, let me tell one thing, because they're ready to show this. The other thing we're going to do okay. today is okay. I have okay. this book. Okay. Get it real close. The Forward and Conclusions. It's actually the first chapter and the last chapter by Johnny okay. Enloe. This okay. book, The Multiplication Factor, uh, by Mark Walker, Forward and Conclusion by Johnny and though 16 okay. Truths About Partnering with God in Business and Life. And I um, want to tell you, this is available. Um, there's a link to Amazon in the video description. And you, we want you to do this through Amazon. And um, and it's actual, the launch is tomorrow. And I just want to tell you the briefest thing. He's a, a, a great friend of, of ours, uh, partner in, in ministry. Mark and Pam Walker are amazing. And, and just to read a couple things, grew up in Spokane, Washington, earned his degree at the University of Washington, devoted husband, Pam, father of two daughters. What goes on? Is, I want, he, he, what he has is Walker's Furniture, and, and um, he's got multiple stores, and he grew from a 2,000-square-foot single location to 13 furniture stores with over 200 employees, retail sales of $60 wow. million dollars a year. But what's the big story here? It, it, you have, we really... I put Elizabeth and I put the pressure on Mark to get a book out. Good. He didn't need to, you know, there's people that don't even know their their own testimony, how powerful it is. But when I heard his story and how he just as a young man, when he had nothing, he didn't have business. He, I want to make resources for the kingdom. I want to be kingdom. I want to be a kingdom financer. And he wanted to do so, so much that when he had nothing, didn't have a car, didn't have a house. His first offering, I think, Big offering was, I can't remember, it was $5,000 or $10,000 that his grandfather gave. And he's like, yes. And he gave it all away. He got given that twice. Wow. And, and so it, there's a, but his story, including that key, key, key part I just said, because there's a lot of people say they want to be a resourcer, but they're not faithful in the little. He proved it and he has proved it. And so um, we wanted, we gave him questions and we wanted to extract from him. We've taken time to, because his testimony is powerful. He's I a met true. him. I met him. We talked to him. I didn't know he was going to write a book, uh, but he was, at, he, he was at Bend, wasn't he? He, he was, was at Bend. Bend. That's where I met him. I, and I, cause my, when you told the story, you mentioned the furniture stores. Uh, so I, I, ever since I, that happened, I thought I don't need to get to know that guy a little bit. So that's so interesting. I, I've written the uh, originally it was called the first chapter and last chapter. I think we went by forward in conclusion. So this is just now being released. But so many of you, you got the word about being kingdom financers, yeah. kingdom billionaires. The Lord's confirmed that during these these days with us, there's this Isaiah 61 call to for those who are willing to see cities and nations rebuilt, set free. Uh, all the promises of Isaiah 61, and this is going to take a lot of resource, but there's a heart the Lord's looking for. And you're going to see it in Mark and Pam's testimony. There's extractable stuff. He's not there's nothing about if he was talking. He is not slick. He is. 
uh, you know, he, he, that's not how he made his money, being a, a, a silver tongue, anything, just being obedient to God. But the, the key obedience he's had, such as what I just said, where he really has proven that that's his joy. I want to be able to bless your people, your kingdom. And he's given millions and millions of dollars for kingdom advancement. Uh, and from something that not necessarily that many people often get millions and millions of blessings for. And um, it's just a great learning story. And so I wanted to uh, recommend that. And um, so it's Amazon. You tell people to go to Amazon. Is that right? And show the title one more time. It's called The Multiplication Factor, Mark 16, Walker. 16 Truths About Partnering with God in Business and, and Life. So, uh, you know, the multiplication uh, factor. And, and so you'll just see the application, even the picture there when you get there. But Amazon... Um, uh, is it they said it's in the you just Amazon Mark Walker, the multiplication factor. And um, like we're going to have it on our website and stuff like that as well. C upcoming. We don't yet. And we like it to go high on Amazon if possible. Yeah, this is really gonna be, it, he doesn't need it for his own blessing. So this is not so, to help him sell books so. for his. In fact, last thing on it, uh, Steve, he's actually not taking a penny for any sales. He's like, Johnny, the work you do with government out of D.C., I want every penny that comes in sales. I want it to go for that. So this wow. is this is not trying to get somebody to sell books yeah. uh, in order to make money. He's a businessman. The Lord's blessed him. He doesn't need it. And so but it's, it'll be a blessing in that it'll be assisting in raising up uh, good kingdom government all throughout Central and South America as well. So and she has put it here that the link to Amazon, the specific link, I guess, is in the video description below the screen. Go down there and you'll, the link will be in there. All right, Johnny, very good. Uh, go ahead, if you will, and pray for the people on our way out of here. All right. Lord, yeah. we just thank you for this opportunity to share together. Lord, I thank you for the blessings that um, Steve was able to see and be a part of and continue to release in Uganda, he and Doreen. Yeah. And just thank you, Lord, for uh, even what it means as you're even telling me now, Lord, just whenever they mm. set feet in Uganda, they gain uh, inheritance mm -hmm. every single time. And so they even have surprise blessings coming to them. Uh, from Uganda in the yeah. in the coming days. Lord, we just thank you for even what you're doing around the world. You're stretching us in every way and you're challenging old concepts and precepts that we've had. And Lord, we just thank you for Israel. And we thank you that you have promised you're going to redeem them. And boy, do they need it, Lord. Uh, we just yeah. agree with even the score of the Super Bowl, Psalm 25, 22. Redeem yeah. Israel from all their troubles, Lord. That's That's a safe prayer. Lord, redeem them from all their troubles. We don't even know what all their troubles are, but we pray for that. We pray for understanding uh, as to your plan there. Lord, we just ask, I just ask, Lord, that your intercessors would have a heightened uh, understanding and discernment for um, their role in praying as it moves forward, more precise, um, um, more in direct alignment with the specific nuance of what you're yes, doing Lord. at this time. And we just... Uh, we just thank you for the opportunity and privilege to live in such a day as this, Lord, of the, the greatest transition since you came on the earth. And we just thank you for the opportunity to be a part of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, okay. Roger Stone will be with us tomorrow at 11 o'clock a.m. Don't miss that. And then the next day after that, Cat Kerr will be with us. So don't miss that as well. It's nice to be back, everybody. It was, I, I didn't want to miss today. I'm glad I, I did. Be sure that you all forward this both for the message that Johnny had and for the report. We're going to give you more video and more pictures in the days ahead. Uh, you know, we had two pro photographers. They work for us full time. They were shot thousands and thousands of pictures. So we'll have some more professional looking uh, presentation in the days ahead. So, all right. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.